Welcome back to my channel. My name is Peyton Hawes, and today I'm going to be giving a recap and review of episode eight, the final episode in the Hulu reality series, The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. I'm an ex-Mormon. I was born and raised in the church in California, moved to Utah after I turned 18, met my husband. We were engaged four and a half weeks after we met and were married four and a half weeks after that, did the whole shebang the year after we were married. We had our first baby. The year after that, we had our second baby. The year after that, we had a third pregnancy that ended in a miscarriage. And we just kept popping out babies, ended up leaving the church. And I spent time documenting my slow transition out of the church. You know, you can kind of see I have a series called my faith crisis series that I'll have in the description box below that starts with my faith crisis part one, where I was like, okay, I'm a officially in a faith crisis here. And I kind of talk about why. And you see, I think it goes all the way to part five before I officially leave the church. So all of that is pretty well documented. I do a lot of responding to comments videos and I just talk a lot about Mormonism and leaving the church and misconceptions and certain teachings. And I provide as much evidence as I possibly can using church sources to explain issues that the church has and why I ultimately left. And I didn't leave because of what other people said or outside sources. I left because of what the church hides from people, what the church teaches, and then it's contradictory teaching. So it has a lot of really good teachings, but for every good teaching, there's a contradictory teaching that impacts people negatively and harms them over a period of time. I believe the church is responsible for several LGBTQ unalivings. I, I don't have an issue with sensitive topics or sensitive words, but this is YouTube. And so I kind of try to be as clean with my words as I can be. Um, not so much with language all the time, uh, but anyway, this is why I think I'm a good person to give recaps and reviews of the episode and what's going on and my insight on, you know, how does Mormonism contribute to these, these situations and scenarios? What might be a misconception, stuff like that. So if you like that kind of content, please subscribe to my channel and continue watching. There's a lot of new faces that I'm really excited about and I love to interact with people in the comments. So if you leave a comment that has a question or even just like comments on just like insight for the show or anything like that, that's just genuine. We try to respond to all of those. And right now the channel is small enough where I can do that. And really the only ones I ignore are ones that might be kind of rude or I, you know, was just dropping by to say, you know, you're ugly or something like that, then like I don't respond to stuff like that. But um, anyone who wants to have genuine dialogue, I respond to all of them. So yes, stay tuned, stick around. We're excited and let's dive into episode eight. Okay, so episode eight starts out with Taylor in her house. She's nesting for her new baby um, and she's on the phone with her mom talking about all of the drama that Macy just dropped on her on this trip about the Sinner Sunday confession where somebody said, you know, that they slept with Dakota, which is Taylor's baby daddy and boyfriend and roommate. They live together. And so now she's concerned that maybe he did cheat on her. And she's like, if that happened, like 1000% easily, he's out. Like, I'm I'm not going to put up with that behavior. And Taylor's mom says that she can't believe she got herself in the situation and that she's bringing a baby into this life in such a chaotic situation and that that's really sad. And I'm over here like, what? A freaking bitch. Like... Uh I don't know how to explain her any differently. Taylor's mom probably peeves me as much as Whitney peeves me. Like, it, it, they just rub me the wrong way. And Taylor's mom will just say it how it is and she'll give her honest opinion and she's very blunt. But I have not heard her say one nice thing to anybody at all. Not to, like, obviously the reality show can show only Taylor's mom's bad moments. And I'm sure that there's a good, positive, genuine side of her, but they don't show that. And there's no way that the cameras or the producers or anybody can 
edit or manipulate those words or the situation. She's just like, I can't believe you're bringing a baby into a life in this chaotic situation. That's really sad. And she's just always talking about how Taylor's doing everything wrong. And this poor baby is entering into this world where she's not married in the temple and in this perfect, happy Mormon life family. She's in a different situation. And it's just so like the situation is what it is. And Taylor cannot be genuine to herself and reality and change the situation. Like the situation is the way that it is because Taylor is trying to protect herself and her baby. And so she can't go back in time and not get pregnant. She can't like she would have to get married in the temple with Dakota, I feel like, for her mom to be happy. And Taylor doesn't fully trust Dakota. Why is marriage pushed so hard on people in the church? It's such it's a legal commitment that in my eyes is such a big deal. And you don't want to do that with someone you're not sure about. If you have any trust issues or difficulties or problems, like marriage is not going to solve that. Um, a baby is not going to solve that. Both of those things are going to test the relationship big time. They can help you grow closer together or they can really drive you apart. And I think that that's an important thing to consider and think about in this scenario. Um, but that very much so is the Mormon way. By the way, my notes are on my computer screen right here. And so I, if I'm not looking directly at the camera and I'm over here, I'm just looking at my notes, so ignore that. I'm not trying to be rude. At this point, Dakota comes over and Taylor confronts him about the Sinner Sunday confession. And Dakota is obviously very annoyed. He's like rolling his eyes, like, here we go again. And he's like, I've been accused of this time and time again. And I didn't do anything. Like, none of it is true. I never cheated on you. And he's like, was I with somebody else around the time that we were in the talking stages? Yes. And I told you that in my eyes we were not committed to each other. We were not exclusive. I don't see that as cheating or a reason for you to lack trust in me. And he's like, but as far as ever since we've been committed and we were boyfriend and girlfriend, I had never cheated on you. And you can tell Taylor very obviously like isn't so sure that she believes him. And as much as I don't like the guy, I think I believe him. Uh, he seems to be telling the truth in this scenario. So yeah, I do still feel like something's gonna happen. I still have a weird vibe from the guy, but I'm also trying to remind myself that this was filmed like last year or something like that. So it's, I do genuinely believe that people can change and, and I do think it takes time, but there's not enough that the camera can show for me to like form full opinions on that. I kind of get weird vibes from the guy, but I do believe him at least from this scene and from this topic in general, I believe that he hasn't cheated on her. Um, up to that point. At this point, Dakota decides to call Macy, who's Taylor's best friend, and he's like, hey, I just want to talk to you about the Sinner Sunday confession. Are you available to meet up? And she's like, yeah, I have like like a 15 minute time frame window where we can chat. So he, they meet up in this parking lot. Dakota gets in Macy's car and she's like, okay, got 15 minutes. Like, let's go get a drink or something. So he, she pulls out of the driveway or the parking lot and they run through a swig drive through. I should have got swig for this video. I had swig the other day. It was delicious. I had a sugar-free candy girl with Diet Mountain Dew. I'm gonna try it. Oh, it's also good if you get extra lime. Chef's kiss. Anyway, so they go through the swig drive through Yes, I am a Utah living mom in case you haven't been here and living under a rock. I'm just kidding. I'm not, I'm not that cool. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I have anxiety. Okay, well they start talking and Dakota like starts off like he comes off like really nice and sweet and genuine and quiet but it feels like so fake it feels like a very condescending and I think that's why I just like get weird vibes from him but he starts telling Macy that she is the reason for all of his and Dakota's arguments and all the fights they get into always lead back to Macy and that it's her fault and all this stuff and she's like okay you're getting upset about a sin Sinner Sunday confession that I received from somebody else. I am literally just the messenger and sharing it with Taylor because if it's true, she's my best friend and I have her best like in 
intentions uh, or best interests at heart. Oh my gosh, can't even talk. Anyway, you pick up what I'm throwing down and she's like, I'm literally just the messenger. And he's like, but you're not. Every argument comes back to you, every single argument. And in my mind, I'm like, dude, this is totally just a Dakota and Taylor situation. And Macy is one of Taylor's best friends and Macy genuinely cares about Taylor and wants what's best for her. So if Macy, I just feel like Macy's one of my favorite characters on the show. Like I feel like I would love to be friends with Macy. Um, you can tell she really cares about her friendships and her relationship, her relationships and she loves hard and she's genuine and she's kind and like if you're in her circle or her bubble like she wants to take care of you she wants to make sure that you're good she's going to protect you she's going to have your back um and any outside source that is seemingly a threat to that like she's going to have your back like she's sweet and kind and genuine but you know she doesn't play like she's going to come out and be like hey like if she sees something that is sketchy or not okay or something that could potentially harm someone inside her bubble, like she is all alert, like ready to protect and be there for the people that she loves. And I love that about her. That is a quality that I don't think a lot of people have. And it literally, like, I just got chills talking about it. It literally makes me feel warm and fuzzy people who are like that. Um, and I think that the arguments between Taylor and Dakota are just their own problems and Taylor might bring up Macy a lot during their arguments, maybe because Taylor vents to Macy about a lot of this stuff and Macy being the good friend that she is, is going to give her honest, genuine opinion about everything and Macy's opinion has always been that she doesn't trust Dakota and she's honest about that with Taylor. But that doesn't make Taylor and Dakota's arguments Macy's fault. Mind you, I've been in the same situation that Macy's in right now. Uh, my own dad at one point told my mother that their marital problems and any issues that they ever had were my fault when I was 15 years old. Wait, no, no, I wasn't 15 when this happened. I was like 16 or 17 when this happened. But anyway he blamed all of their problems on me. And I'm over here like, excuse me, what? Like, I might say things to my mom about my dad when it's just her and I. My mom was like one of my best friends. She's passed away from breast cancer five years ago. And she was genuinely my best friend. So I told her everything. It was very honest with my feelings. And if I felt like I didn't trust, there were times where I struggled as a daughter with my dad and I struggled watching my mom as a wife with him and I was very honest with her about that but that doesn't mean that I'm the reason for all of their arguments and problems like I just genuinely cared about my mom and I also felt hurt by the same person and so I was honest about that and I don't know I've just been in a similar situation I'm just like I feel like I was just the messenger of things that had happened and I was honest about how they made me feel I was honest about like my care for my mom and wanting what was best for her and like feeling like she deserved better but outside sources are not the sole reason for people's relationship problems like kids are hard on couples no matter what and they can test marriages but it's not the kids fault ever it's it's the only parties responsible for the making or breaking of a relationship are the people in the relationship and that is just how i feel if you guys have similar stories or situations or feelings on that like comment them below because i'm really interested in you know what people think about that scenario like do you feel like macy is to blame in this situation since she very obviously doesn't like dakota and tells taylor that um or similarly like in my situation even though there's limited information or details like like could me sharing my feelings and opinions with my mother be you know i don't know just what do you guys think about that i just feel i just don't feel like outside source i feel like outside sources environmental things people family children whatever 
impact relationships, but I don't think it's any anyone else's responsibility or reason for making or breaking a relationship other than just the two people in the relationship. And that's how I feel. And Macy even says that she gets a weird feeling that Dakota is so concerned about the Sinner Sunday thing, considering she was just the messenger. She's like, I feel like the reason like him getting so defensive and upset about it, like makes her feel shady, like he is guilty of something. Personally, I don't think that he's guilty of that. I think he's just tired of constantly feeling like people are accusing him of cheating or waiting for him to cheat or waiting for him to mess up or do something wrong. And I'm sure that that weighs heavily on him. And I'm saying that as someone who doesn't really favor him, but there's people that bother me more on the show. Whitney bothers me more. Taylor's mom bothers me more. Jen's husband, Zach bothers me more. Those people all bother me more than Dakota does. At this point, the show shifts to Whitney inviting a bunch of her family out to dinner. And she ends up admitting, admitting, announcing that she is pregnant. And she does it like with a cake, like they cut into a cake and pull out a pregnancy test. And it's her actual pregnancy test that she peed on. And they're like, oh, there's a cap on it. I'm like, okay, a cap. Every single pregnancy test I've ever taken in my life, I don't know how many, with the caps, they leak. Like you have to freaking get toilet paper or something and clean the test off. Like, <laughs> unless I'm doing it wrong, I don't know. The results are always there. Anyway, so she puts it in the cake that she's expecting everybody to eat. And even her little sister is like, dude, ew, no. <laughs> but yeah, so she announces that she's pregnant. And then she says in a little side interview, like I'm pregnant. I don't want to be a part of mom talk anymore. I don't want that kind of negativity or energy in my life. I just want to be with my family and focus on that. And this is going to be my last pregnancy. And I want to focus on my homestead. She wants to get like all of these animals and stuff like that. And um, she also says that she's not going to find out the gender until the baby arrives. They're not going to do any type of gender reveal or find it out for themselves or anything like that. And I believe in real time, she's actually still pregnant, but she's almost done. I think I saw a video of her saying using Kylie Jenner's audio where she's like, I'm 34 weeks today. Um, I'll try and find it and I can like clip it in. But um, if I ever get pregnant again, I totally want to use that sound and I better not forget at 34 weeks. If I announce a pregnancy, remind me. <laughs> so at this point, now we have moved on to Jen and Zach's house and Jen wants to have a conversation with Zach about medical school because that's coming up. Medical school is about 10 years of school and they just found out that, that Zach got into his top pick school, which was in New York. And she's like, I hear that medical school is really tough on marriages. And I, you know, considering where we're at right now, I feel like we need to focus on us. And I kind of want to consider taking like delaying medical school for one year to focus on our relationship and have that time. And um, Jen wants to like think about it because she's not sure if she wants to like uproot her whole life and go to New York. She's like, I feel like it's a lot to think about and consider I have much more business opportunities here with mom talk. And this is where, you know, my career is. And she is, she's just talking about this stuff with Zach and Zach says that he does not care. And it's pretty clear that he doesn't want to delay a year. He wants to move to New York. He feels like it's a no brainer, just wants to like uproot everything and go and doesn't care that it's impacting her business opportunities. And I think she, I think he would be happy if she separated himself, herself from them um, because they bring out her true personality of who she is and where she's happiest. And Zach doesn't like to see that because then she has opinions. And again, these are my opinions and how I am taking in the information that I'm receiving. But yeah, I just think it's really weird and I don't. But Jen is saying that they've been having a lot of discussions about their relationship and that Zach knows that if he continues to treat her that way, she's not going to stay married to him. I don't know how 
much I believe Jen in that. I think it's probably easier to threaten that kind of thing when your partner threatens it to you. Maybe not so much easier, but I think in some situations it can make it easier if the other person is threatening that. Like my husband and I, I mean, we've been married for six and a half years almost, and we have never threatened marriage, our marriage with each other in any type of like argument or disagreement ever. Like it's, it's always about like, how can we come closer? like through this and so i feel like jesse actually talks about the mormon church so much more than anybody else does on the show like the show is so much more a reality tv show about this mom talk group and jesse more often than not is the one to bring in mormonism and talk about how it relates to their situations and marriages and life and and stuff like that which i really really admire and i think she's actually ex-mormon i think she said that in a podcast episode so yeah at this point macy is having a launch party for her brand baby mama which is needle supplements for women and she's having this launch party a bunch of influencers around utah are invited it's really cute they literally have like a tattooing station there and even Michaela is like, I think it's so awesome that she has the tattooing station, but a lot of the other influencers that were invited are Mormon and I'm pretty sure that's against their beliefs. So, and Michaela, I think left the church too. So that's kind of why she was saying it in that way. But yeah, I thought it was kind of funny, but Macy said that Whitney hasn't shown up and she hasn't heard from her and she's like, if she doesn't show up, like I really think it's going to jeopardize the future of our relationship because like Whitney was there when Macy was just like talking about the idea for this business and she was there in the very like beginning of just like starting to get things going and that Whitney was there supporting her from the beginning. And so if now that she's having her launch party, that Whitney's not going to show up because she's having issues with some of the other people that were invited. She just feels like that is just a really bad friend move. So all the girls are chatting and Demi says that Macy's having a countdown for her biz for like when the business launches. And she's like, I say if it gets to the last second of the countdown for the business launch and Whitney doesn't walk through the door, then they're all going to unfollow her on social media. And Taylor says she's not surprised that Whitney's not showing up because she also didn't show up to her baby shower. Um, so yeah, they all end up unfollowing her um, and Whitney never showed up. And I remember that was really stressing Macy out. She's like, I don't want another thing to have to worry about this is just creating more drama and that was like hard for her then taylor's water breaks in the middle of the night dakota gets some footage of that and so they're off to go have their baby and michaela is having her birthday party while that's happening at a roller skating rink her husband jace planned the whole thing um set it up for all the girls and their husbands um and jen says that she has the flu so they can't come but jesse thinks that zach is the one who didn't want her there so yeah and i don't know how so many people were roller skating in mini skirts because <laughs> they just were and i'm like i would be sitting there so much more worried about my mi my mini skirt while roller skating than i would about even the actual roller skating <laughs> aspect of it and not falling then you'll never guess what freaking happens guys whitney walks in whitney who was not invited to this birthday party, walks in all slow-mo with the music again. It's a drama music playing. Whitney comes in with a music, or with a music, with a present for Michaela. And Michaela looks really confused. She's like, I didn't invite Whitney. All the other girls are confused. They're wondering why she's here or how they even, how she even knew that they were at a roller skating rink and why she came and whitney sits down with some of the girls and they were like why are you here like this is michaela's birthday party and she didn't invite you you guys are not even friends anymore and so whitney gets up and she's just like this is awkward and she just goes and talks to macy and she apologizes for not coming to the lunch party and says that she she just couldn't handle it and the drama and it was too hard for her and she needed the space yada yada and macy's not giving in too easily which i like because i feel like she's forgiven whitney 
really fast multiple times. And I think that that's okay to do, especially in close friendships. But at a certain point when it's happened over and over and over, Macy's starting to, to like build a wall up a little bit. Like now she's expecting things like this to happen. And so she's like, I just don't fully understand. Like I hear what you're saying, but I don't understand. Like I feel like you should have been there for me and I've always been there for you. And it really hurts me that, you know, you're treating me this way when I thought that we were still friends, even though you're not friends with them and you guys have your issues. Like this launch party was for me in my business and we're friends and that really hurt. And so Macy like kind of forgives Whitney, but she tells her like, I'm not kicking you out of my dog house yet. She's like, I don't even know if that's the right way to say it. I've never heard this figure of speech before. But she says that like, she's like, you're, you're like halfway out. Like, I'm not fully ready to just like fully push you away, but like you're halfway out and I want you to know that that's where you stand with me. Um, but like, I'm continuing to give you another chance. And Whitney's like, I'm fine with that. Like I'm here. Then Taylor and Dakota welcome their baby into the world. I can't believe they got some of the footage they did. I know they blurred stuff out. Anybody can be in the room when I'm giving birth. But if there are freaking huge ass reality TV cameras in the room, I would be so uncomfortable. Personally, I would be so uncomfortable. <laughs> then there are like two dramatic things that happened at the end of this episode that kind of leave you on cliffhangers. So some of the girls are chatting and Jesse gets a text from Jen saying that she can't be in mom talk anymore because Zach doesn't want her associating with them. And then Macy calls Jenna, which they, Jenna is a, an ex of Dakota's and they think that Jenna could have been the one who left the Sinner Sunday confession. So Macy wanted to reach out and see, and she like, she's really just trying to protect Taylor in this situation. Like she really wants to find out because she doesn't want Taylor to move forward in a relationship with Dakota and potentially get married to him to find out that he really did cheat on her. And then she ends up having to have another divorce and all of this stuff. So she's like, I want to try and protect her and prevent that from happening. And I want to get all of the, all of the info. I don't want there to be like weirdness or tension in the air lingering. So Macy calls Jenna and is like, I just want to ask you questions about your previous relationship with Dakota. And Jenna's like, I'll tell you everything. And then the episode ends. So it's a big time cliffhanger. Jen's leaving mom talk. Jenna is about to tell Macy everything regarding her and Dakota's relationship. So for me, that means there's definitely going to be a season two. Um, I hope there's more than eight episodes in season two. Um, or they can even do it how like Netflix will release a couple um, episodes at a time like uh, Love is Blind. They do that with Love is Blind. Like I prefer when it's all there at once, but also it's kind of fun when you like have to wait and the sh it feels like the love for the show lasts longer instead of like binging it all in one weekend. And anyway, I, I don't know. I, I'm also when Love, and Bl Love is Blind episodes are coming out, I do get very upset when I have to like wait another week for an episode. So there's also that. But if you liked this video and you want to see future episodes, especially if they come out with a season two, give this a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm going to actually film another video that gives like my whole recap of the season and what I thought about it, but it's going to be much more centered around Mormonism and how I think a lot of the girls, um, and their circumstances, marriages, situations, and, and things that happen throughout the season, how Mormonism plays a role in that. So if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed and you turn the notification bell on so that you can be notified when that is released. Um, leave a red heart emoji in the comment section below if you made it to the very end. And I love you guys so much. I'm so thankful for you and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.